Well, with our new name and our new brand, building off our 40-year legacy of education, uh, we've also felt that it's important to not just stay based upon our traditional approaches. So our education strategy is rapidly evolving as well. We want to make sure that we've got a full spectrum of educational offerings from medical student days all the way out to later parts of your career. And we want to make sure that we've got a nice spectrum of those offerings. In order to design things better, you know, we're going to continue with our live conferences. We're going to expand our distance education offerings. We're going to do it in more advanced technology approaches overall. And then our on-site leadership development work is continuing to expand. And each of those areas need to be really brought together in a common thread, making sure that we as an organization are really able to design an educational strategy that is meaningful for those that want to participate. So a competency-based strategy is the direction we're headed. Competencies, it's very important in leadership development as well as in educational strategies overall. You know, if individuals are going to pursue professional development, expand their, their skill sets overall, then it really is uh, better done when you follow a series of competencies that you're trying to uh, achieve overall. In healthcare, we've also been under the influence for, gosh, 15 years with the ACGME and the ABMS competencies, those six competencies that uh, we've uh, been trying to follow. But our competencies are different. This is more focused on leadership and management. It's a trend within the, le the leadership education realm overall. And so the competencies that we have chosen, we feel are critically important for our own advancement as an organization. Well, there are certainly a host of competencies out there, and many of them are sort of motherhood and apple pie types. But for us in healthcare, we found that uh, for physicians, we focused in on 16 competencies. And we've put those into uh, four different buckets, but about a half of them are sort of on that interpersonal side, and the other half are more on that business and management side. So the communication and relationship management is one piece collaborative functions, developing relations, conflict management, skillful communication are all critically important. Then leadership itself, while it's targeted as a competency, it has several components of which are adaptability, your ability to motivate others, trust, respect, uh, strategic perspective, critical appraisal skills, and you're just, that all leads into your general leadership competency overall. In addition to that, we have the professionalism which is accountability, judgment, integrity, humility, and then finally we have a couple under the technical expertise, which is all about your business knowledge and skills as well as your knowledge of the healthcare enterprise as a whole. Well, in terms of selecting these ones, uh, we did a good review of the leadership uh, literature. We also have been very much a part of an organization that's called the Healthcare Leadership Alliance, and that's a coalition of six critical organizations in healthcare. And that group actually has a, a well established Health Leadership Alliance set of competencies. There's about 300 of them bucketed into five different categories. And while we uh, made sure that we mirrored some of those competencies, we also felt that it would be important for us to develop our own specific competencies, and that's why we wound up with these 16. Competency-based education is important, and as an individual consuming education, it does provide you that path, and it allows you to sort of provide yourself with your own checks and balances in terms of uh, what you're achieving, what you need a little bit more work upon. For us as an organization, it's also important though that it, we use these competencies to make sure that all of our courses over a general map address each of these 16 competencies eventually. Obviously not every course is going to have each 16 in there, but we want to make sure that we're always covering them. And then as we do curricula design for our different certificates and different programs, we want to make sure that those competencies are interwoven in there as well. Additionally, we're making sure that our um, offerings are moving so that you can identify novice, intermediate, and advanced types of uh, courses as well as certificates. And so we need to make sure that these competencies are woven all the way through that advancement. And obviously what you get as a novice is much different than what you're getting as an expert, if you will.
Well, the impact of uh, competency-based leadership education is uh, multiple, and that is we as an organization, as I said a few moments ago, will continue to expand and really strategically develop our programs. Through that, the uh, individuals who participate with our programs will, I think, uh, feel a much stronger impact for themselves. At the end of their courses, at the end of their certificates, or even their advanced education degrees, they'll be able to look back and recognize, gosh, I've really achieved competencies in these areas as well as competencies in some other areas and they will be able to see and recognize just what a true impact it's, in, it's created for themselves. Secondarily from that then, however, is the impact that those individuals can carry into their organizations and create the change that we're all looking for. So this combination of the individuals, the organizations, and then us as an organization is really across the spectrum and that creates that broad footprint of an impact within healthcare overall.